let me ask you this. Uh, I mean, a, a Swedish independent uh, nuclear, uh, I don't know what to call it, body or whatnot, but they, anyway, they came to a, they, they were looking into the, the question regarding Israel's, uh, you know, nuclear weapons and all that, as we know, the new news spoke out about that many years ago now, but they estimated that they had around 80 nuclear weapons at their disposal. And we know something about, you know, for example, the Samson option, yeah, more than that. you know, which is, I wouldn't doubt it. The Samson option uh, entails basically that if, if, we end up in any kind of scenario where we would be threatened. We would just, you know, kind of scorch the earth kind of thing. Um, and that's a viable option, I think, in this case, if a real threat were to be posed against them. What's the what's the likelihood of this, do you think, in terms of... Uh, uh, well, I, I think the Samson option even goes farther because they they sort of imply with the Samson option that they would access U.S. military nuclear weapons from U.S. bases and that they might even have some of the U.S. launch codes. It's just insane. I, I've heard, yeah. I've oh, heard man. this before. I've heard this before. Uh, going back uh, going back a good number of years that Israel would use U.S. weapons and that Israel could unlock, had the capacity to unlock those weapons on its own and override the United States. Yeah. So if, if we even if we the United States said we don't want our weapons to be used, Israel has the capacity to access our military complexes and to launch our nuclear weapons. That's what I've been told. And I've been told that not by conspiracy theorists, but by defense intelligence people who are outraged over it, who, who are very who are grievously worried that it will uh, that it will happen, that that's exactly what they'll do. I mean, that's just if something like that would occur, I'd. I'd... I'd imagine and I hope that there would be a tremendous rift within the American military and leadership as well, but because a lot of the problems now is from the staunch pro-Zionist American politicians and military people and everything else that are playing right into the hands of Israel, right? Yes, yes. And the members of Con- most people do not know, members of Congress are required by APAC, the American Israeli Political Action committee they apac require is the most is the biggest lobby in washington and requires congress uh to sign a pledge in exchange for fundraising for campaign fundraising and all of these elections require huge quantities of money they just burn money like nobody you've ever seen burn money for nothing everybody all the american people are so unhappy with this system but there's nothing we can do about it uh and they israel apac requires that they that members of congress using their money sign pledges that they will never cut israel's funding allowance yeah that they recognize that Jerusalem is the is the God given capital of Israel, and that they will do everything in their everything necessary to protect Israel's right to exist on the earth. And if if a Congress member refuses to sign that document, then that pledge, then their funding is Mister is is almost immediately pulled off. And when they do campaign fundraising, the people say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to call you, I'm not allowed to help you, I'm not allowed to give you anything because you haven't signed the pledge. I can't host an event for you because you didn't sign the pledge (laughs) to Israel. Mm -hmm. And so they're buying our politicians that way. 